Hey guys, I'm just going to show you a couple of ways that we can edit our sense of place indoor quarantine photos tonight. So I'm going to use Snapseed again like I've been using for the last couple of demonstrations for you because it is free and it is available on your phones and on your tablets anywhere else. There are loads of other things you could be using. You could be using Lightroom, you could be using Photoshop, but they're all paid. Um, so this just makes it super accessible for everybody. All right, so opening up Snapseed, I'm going to open my camera roll and you can see I've taken lots of photos from different angles at different times of the day, trying to capture the light, trying to capture that outdoors, indoors separation feeling. I've tried to frame my photos with part of the window frame. Um, there we go. So I'm going to take, I think something like this, where it's just the window as our center focus. The first thing I want to do is I just want to straighten that image up. So I'm going to use the rotate tool just to it's auto adjust it for me, but I actually, I don't quite think that's right. So I'm just going to use the grid as laid out. I think it needs to be a little bit more like that. And I can check along the window lines. I can check along the lines of the building, the lines at the top, the blind lines is a perfect photo to be able to use those grid lines on. So there we go. I'm much happier now. That looks a little bit better. Um, do I want to crop a tiny little bit off of there just so it matches more with the other side. It has that more symmetrical feel. Just a tiny bit. So both of those sides now match. Right. Okay, so first up today is going to be curves. So we've spoken a little bit about curves in our viewfinder editing video, but this is the most effective way to adjust the brightness and the contrast. If we move the middle line, then we're gonna change the luminosity for all pixels in that range. So if I move the line down here, then I am going to darken the pixels in the darker luminosity value, or I can brighten the pixels with darker luminosity value. So that's kind of how this, how this works. Oops, um, fat fingers can cause all sorts of issues. So I'm just going to bring my mid-tones, my mid-tones a little bit darker, and my dark tones a little bit darker again because I'd quite like to have a bit of a silhouette feel. A bit of a silhouette feel and a contrast with the outside, that high contrast, outside, inside, feeling that I'd like to achieve. Okay, now this has taken out one of my favorite colors from this photo. So by doing that, I've actually got rid of that really beautiful golden light on that cross beam and on my basket chair. So a way we can put that back in is by using the dodge and burn tool. So that is over here in brushes. This is great. The way to make your brush smaller in Snapseed is just to zoom in. And the only area that I really want to focus this on for now, for the purpose of this tutorial is just on this cross beam. And I'm going to be using dodge and burn to take off some of that red and bring it back up to that yellow so you can just see how that works this is a tool that is based in traditional darkroom techniques where they would be able to selectively alter the exposure so i'm just taking out some of that Color and putting it back into these gold tones. If I zoom out, you can just see the difference there. Rather than being like a bright red on that cross beam, it's gone back to being that really golden yellow. And I can have a little look at my chair area as well. Now this is going to be way fiddlier, but I would use that same, same technique, just rubbing over those areas, careful not to Go too far. Just to take out some of that. Alright, 
right, we can step back and see how that looks. That's better, I think. I still have a little play with this for a while. The purpose of these tutorials is just to show you what you can do. I'm not going to go through an entire editing process because it can sometimes take hours to do really minor tweaks and it can get really tedious where I'm cleaning up all these little areas but I just want to show you the capabilities and then for you to go away and have a go but don't expect this to be a quick process to get some really nice edits. Okay so I'm happy with that. Um, next what I might have a little look at is the white balance. So our white balance helps us remove any unrealistic colours from objects that appear white in real life, um, but the colour temperature might have affected them when I took the photo. So I'm just going to have a little go here. I'm really glad that I went in and corrected that crossbeam colour because if that was still red right now, I think that would be showing up too much. So just going to get a little bit warmer because I really like how the sunlight is reflecting there off of that window just to the right of the centre beam. If we compare it to there and then we bring that temperature up a little bit, you can see the difference. You can also see the difference in the little bowl just down on the right hand corner. If it's in the middle, you can see how that bowl almost has like a blue tint. I don't want it to have a blue tint. I want it to have its kind of true colour. So if I take the warmth up, the temperature of my white balance up, then I can just get those little hints of that true white coming back in. So there we go. Happier. Happier with that. just going to erase a little bit more of that orange from that crossbeam. You can see the difference there. I don't mind it being a little bit warm, but I don't want it to be too warm. I do like it when it had that really lovely soft yellow feel. You still get orange tones in there, it's just not quite as dark as it was. And these are great, you can really, you can do lots of just subtle adjustments, just subtle. Okay. You can see the difference I think that that makes to the photo. All right, then we are going to have a little look at our contrast. So I still might want a bit more contrast in this photo just to increase the silhouette of my shelf and the objects on my shelf. I really want that kind of indoors outdoors feel. So let's have a look at contrast and then also a vignette. So this is our vignette great about this tool is you can increase or decrease the size of the vignette and then we can do inner and outer brightness as well so it's again so much flexibility within this tool if I go up this way I've got the brightness around the edges if I go this way I bring that darkness to the edges and I don't want it to be completely obliterated but I do want to bring in a lot more darkness than I currently have at zero. So we're going to bring quite a lot of darkness, I think. Okay. If I hold this little button up in the top here, I can see the before and after. I just keep checking it all the time. I think maybe let's have a look at. I just want that creeping darkness. I don't want it to be so dark that you lose the edges of the windowsill. There we go. 
Okay, so if I hold the photo, I can see how it was and how it is now, and you can see the difference. So already I feel like there's more of a contrast between the inside and the outside of the room. Brings more mood to the photo. Just bear in mind that this can take a while. Okay, so there we have our indoor-outdoor quarantined window photo. It'd be really interesting to see what this would like. It'll look like in the morning or at different times of day. I might do a nighttime shot and see what that looks like in comparison for you guys with just a few windows over, with just a few windows lit on the opposite building or none at all to show you the difference. So there you go. We can't wait to see yours. Those are the main three tools that you can get to get to know and experiment with. So it was curves, the white balance, and dodge and burn that I used for this photo. I then used a little bit of the vignette and contrast. So have a go.